So, what questions do you guys have? No questions. Project reported. Yes. Well, uh, due date on the project says before class on Tuesday the 11th. That makes sense, Dustin. I used to teach only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is the first semester I've had a Monday, Wednesday class in a while, so my brain is kind of hardwired that way. Tuesday the 11th. Well, that's the due date. Let's make it the 12th. Yeah. Okay, I will fix that. My apologies. Thanks for pointing that out. Sometimes I do goofy things. So, are there questions about the assignment now? Yes, right. Uh, if there's a comment, like in the beginning, so is all the other columns that are vectors supposed to be null or null? You mean the other four? The other four. The other three. No, they're not. So what happens when you call get token? So it returns the empty string. So that means not one space, not null, the empty string. Now this is fairly easy to manage when you load these things. If there's nothing there, you just store the empty string at that location. <clears throat> but you have to be careful. You don't want null there, or you'll crash. Good question. Other questions, anyone? Okay. So it seems that some of you are having some conceptual issues, and I thought it might be helpful. If we go over part of the project in terms of putting it together, the organization, what it looks like, and so on. <coughs> so what I have done is I've collected some files here. And this is basically what you should have. Well, not basically what you should have. All right, so the files for this project, a make file. So you have the student one. It's fairly easy to adapt that. Demoio.s is a sample source code file for your part. Driver.cpp will have a main method. Now, later on, the next part of this project, we will have a macro preprocessor. The macro processor will have a main method in it, so we won't need a driver after this point. But it makes no sense to put a main method in a file parser. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So, we need the driver as a way to run this and test this program. But it's essentially a throwaway thing. In the next pass, we won't have driver.cpp anymore. Then we have file parse exception, and then the two file parsers. Notice there's no R here in file parse. There's no file parser exception, file parse exception. I will expect exactly those names. So when I copy your files from your handed subdirectory, and you've named it wrong, I won't get it. So be aware of that. Okay, so I have five files for my project here. A sixth one if we include the source. So, let's look at some of this. The make file here. Are there any questions about how to build this make file? Is clear to you guys. We have the clean entry as well. This is what do we remove? So you can say make clean if you want to compile clean uh, with no leftovers. You want to get rid of everything you've compiled and do it from scratch. 
Yes. What's the for end? The line for? To remove. This is what has to be removed. Driver, driver.o, file parser.o. Those are all the compiled programs. So you can remove things with this rule. So then if you want to, you type make clean, and then make it, it will recompile, recompile everything from <coughs> scratch. So, empty file, file parser, I just copied it from the assignment. And this as well is just copied from the assignment. All right, so why is this separate H file here? Why does it exist? What is the purpose of this .h file? This is the declaration of the class and the signatures of the methods in the class. It may in some fashion look like an interface, but it's not. It is not an interface. With an interface, you have two classes, essentially. If you think of interface as an abstract class, which it is, you implement that interface, so you have a completely separate class. That's not what's going on here. The H file is where you define the class. Now with C++, you have to have prototypes for your methods before you call them. With Java, it doesn't matter. As long as that method exists, it's in your class somewhere it'll be found and used. With C++, however, it must exist before it is called and used. So you have to prototype your functions before you can so typically you would collect these prototypes, which is the signatures here, in one place at the very beginning of a program. And when we made that transition from C to C++, this turned into the H file, this collection of methods that go at the top. So these are just the signatures of the methods. And notice here, too, that the variables only need a type. You don't have a name for the variables here, though you can put them, but it's typically not done. So this is the declaration of the class, and then here are your class level variables. So what should be a class level variable, and what should be in the CC file? How do you know if a variable should be class level or not. If you're gonna if you're gonna be using it in more than one place? If you're gonna use it in more than one method, then it needs to be a class level. Okay. Yes. Now understand you might use the same thing in more than one more than one file or the same name, but that doesn't mean mean it needs to be class level. What it means is the value needs to be preserved between calls to a method, then it needs to be a class level variable. For instance, I might have here int row column. Okay, are we using rows and columns? Sure. Does this need to be a class level variable? No, it doesn't. It does not. Therefore, you should not have anything here that you don't need. Now, what I've listed here isn't the full set of what you actually do need, but rather the minimal to, that we need to do something. The file name. Why does this have to be a class level variable? Well, it's not going to change, that's true. Because we were using it in other functions? We're going to get it from the command line, that's true. We can pass it around, we can do that. But there's a problem here. There's a problem here. Notice the read file has no arguments. There's no parameters to this read file. So you can't pass in the file name to this method. Therefore, it has to be a class level variable because you can't pass it in. The 
vector string contents. Well, you want something besides a string here because you're going to bust it into four pieces. Now, there might not be all four there, but every entry is going to be four pieces. It could be the empty string, or it could be a label, an opcode, an operand, or a comment. Okay, so this is the definition of the class, and it's the only place we're defining this class. So when we go to the file parser, we will define these methods and write the code for them. Uh, This is empty, so a good place to start would be to copy the H file. Not all of it, just the methods that are public. Those go in the CC file, and then, of course, the others you can copy as you have methods. We don't have any more methods, so here I'm going to paste this. Then I'm going to go in and edit this file. Well, we don't have class file parser to CC Do we have public? Nope, not going to work. Do we have using namespace standard? Yes, always. Now, up here we want include file parser dot h. Do we need to copy and paste all of these guys? No. No, not necessary. Okay. So now let's do some coding. File uh, parser string. Well, I need a string, so I'm going to call it string s. Now, what am I going to do here? Looking at my variables, I'm going to set the file name, and the number of lines, and the vector. Now the vector is already declared, so there's no reason to make it. We could do a reserve thing if we wanted to, but we don't have to. We do need to set the number of lines in the file now. Okay, so. File name equals f. Number of lines equals zero. Taking that, we have file name, number of lines. Okay, well, it seems strange maybe to have one file name spanning two files, but that's the way it works. Not declaring file name anywhere, nor number of lines, it's in the H file. Okay, so why do I not have to, why, why don't I have to say contents equals new vector? I don't have to do that, but why? Can I just use this contents? Because we don't want dynamic. We don't really want dynamic. Right. If we do that, we're going to have to get rid of it. We want to avoid dynamic. Well, this is very different from Java. If you had a declaration which would look like this, except the B and vector would be capital, and you tried to do something with content, you'd crash with the null pointer exception immediately. In the constructor, you'd have to say contents equals new vector. However, we do not have to do this with C++, nor should we. It's more efficient not to. If you stop and think about it, you can allocate memory on the heap with new, or you can skip it and, and let the stack hold this vector. Which is more efficient? The stack is actually more efficient. When this goes out of scope, it's popped off the stack and it's gone. We don't have to go in and ask the system to give us memory at runtime. It's already there. Plus, when we're done with it, we don't have to delete it. We just pop it off the stack and it's gone. 
So this is actually more efficient. It's better than allocating it on the heap. All right. Since we don't have any allocations on the heap, then we can just do this. There's my destructor. Now, if I had said contents equals new vector, then in the destructor, I would have to delete the vector. I would have to delete the vector. Otherwise, it would continue to eat up memory. All right, read file. So how is the read file going to function? Well, we looked at this. We have the code for it before. But what I want to do now is just go through and uh, write a simple loop to scoop this up. So, OK. I have stream input. Again, I don't need the keyword new. I just declare a variable of that type, and it springs into existence, and it's good to go. OK, now we also need a string. So we're going to read these one at a time. String, line, and then we want input.open. And then we need the file name. And the kind of access we want. So this is just a D. That's all we're going to do. So the argument here to open this is just IOS in. All right. Now that may look good, but it won't work because open expects a C string. And file name is actually a string. C++ string. So we will make one that turns a C++ string into a C style string. Now unfortunately you can't get away, get away from C strings, it's just not possible. Okay, once we have this file we call the open, we need to see if it worked. So to see if it worked, we just see not input, then row, final parse, exception, could not open file, uh, parse exception, could not open the file. Notice we don't say throw new file parse exception. This was the Java, we'd have to do that. Yes? I kind of missed the uh, is stream part. Is stream input? I have stream input. <coughs> yes, and this is a file stream, an input file stream. It's an input file stream. So when we're talking about reading and writing files, I mean, it's basically. There's a canonical way of doing things, and you just copy them, and everybody does it. Uh, there are streams like we have in Java. There are input file streams, input streams, output streams, and so on. So this is just an input file stream. And the name of it is input. So we open up this input file stream, passing the name of the file, and then the kind of access we want. So we have an input-output stream, and we want to read it in. So the other choices are out and concatenate, yes. Is there any difference between in.open and input? Well, not really. I mean, it depends on what you call it. I call it an input here. In might be a reserved word. I don't know. Uh, it seems risky to just call it in, but it should be OK. So, okay, we have the input, we've got a line, we've opened it now, and if it doesn't fail, we know that it's open. So then while not input.eof, while we're not at the end of the file, do so. So we're going to do get line. 
and put the line. So that stores the value in line. <coughs> then we want to save it contents.push back underscore back line. So we save the file on the stack. And that's our simple file. And then once we have finished reading the file, we would say input.close. And we're out of there. Questions about this? Okay, so this is the simplistic part here, the contents.pushback. Where are you going to bust that line with the token? You want to parse it when you call get token, or you want to parse it when you store it? You know, I'm of the opinion that now is the time. Here's where you should bust it into tokens, rather than keep doing the same work over and over again every time you try to access something. So I think you should go ahead and maybe have a call to get tokens, private method, and have it return the four pieces that you're going to actually push back into the vector. Is it going to be an array of four things? Is it going to be a vector of four elements? Is it going to be a single struct? You can return any of those things. That's not an issue. So you decide what you want to do. Also, remember that you can do enumerations, enum in C++. And so if you want to, you can put label, opcode, operand in brackets. So you might have line. makes it easier to follow as opposed to the tree. You can. As I said, this is one of the choices I want you to think about and decide what works best for you. It's really important that you keep your methods small. Uh, there is a tendency to add a whole bunch of stuff in here and make this really long. So I would not bust it up here. I would call a private method that busted that line into tokens from this place and take the busted pieces and put them in this vector. Questions about that? Okay. Get token. Well, that's not going to work just now because <coughs> we don't have the column. Should you parse them here in get token? Probably not. Probably not the best design. Return the image. So the get token doesn't work. That's okay. We just want to get started on this. Now I want to print the file. Okay, so that I can do. So how am I going to print this file? Or unsign. I equals zero. Now, if you're not used to writing unsigned int i, because Java doesn't have unsigned integers. They don't exist. But they do in C++. If you don't use them, you're going to get warnings uh, from the compiler. Because it, to use the vector, the index needs to be an unsigned integer. OK, i less than contents size and plus plus see how contents uh, okay there's the print file size okay we need the size thing we're going to need that of course, contents.size is going to be 
the size that we need, but when we read the line, we want to increment this. So let's say uh, get line, push back, and then number uh, line plus plus again. The size of the vector is the number of lines, so this is not actually necessary, but I have it, so I'm going to update that. Int size. So if you didn't have number of lines and you just do contents dot size. Return number um, and I think that's the end of it. So this is actually easy to do except for one piece which is busting that line into the tokens. Alright. Now then the driver. What goes in the drive? So in the driver, we're going to have to make an instance. An instance of our file. And if we refer to anything in here, we're going to have to have it. Include file parser. H, next name, int rc, rv. So this is two dimensional, of course. This is the number of command line arguments, and this is each command line argument. Well, argument two has a certain number of characters in it, argument one. So What does this refer to? Row one, column zero, but what is it? Uh -huh. So suppose I say driver yellow I O dot S. What does this refer to? Demo S. Yes. Huh? Demo. D. Not demo. Uh. S. Is that character? S. Is of course a pointer to demo IO dot S. It's a character array, so that works just fine. It's a pointer. It's one dimension. It's a two dimensional array. And remember that second dimension. What you have here is a pointer. So if you dereference this, what you would get is the oil on that end. It's a character array. That's why it's two dimensions. So if we do the rows and columns here, here's what we have. Oh. There's your rows and your columns. Yeah. You see? So one zero, one one, one two, one three, mm -hmm. one four, one. So if we do demo, I'm sorry, if we do RP0, well, this whole piece is RP0. RP01 is the R. Because character arrays, pointers in C and C++, these C strings, it points to the first character. All right, so if you want to get the individual character, you can do this. But without the second dimension, it's the string. It's the string. OK, so notice, too, this differs. Arc C's, we hope, is 2. We 
because the name of the command is one. I'm sorry, is zero. So if you just call a program, then RC is one, and the element at zero is the command. But with this, it's the second. So if RC is not equal to two, Or you could say if R C equals one. If it's not two, it's a problem because maybe they put extra things there. Okay, if R C is not two, then see out an error message. Put the file name as the only. And if you don't do this indel, then it stops, and you'll have the output and then the prompt to input the shell. Okay, so then if this occurs, then you want to return one. It's an error situation. You want to return one and you're out of there. One means there was an error. Zero means everything worked. Well, you could do exit if you wanted to, but this works just the same. Return one and you're out of the main method, which means the program stops running. Okay, so now if we get past this point, then we know that the number of arguments is correct. So now I will say file parser parser and pass it the name of the file, which is RD0. <laughs> Finer details. Okay, so now we can do something with it. Parser.read file. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to do the variable name. And then we can do parser.print file. Return. Zero. We're done and out of there. Terminated normally. There's my job. Okay. <coughs> so I suggest you type make fairly often, but you need a certain minimal amount of code before it will work. Make. Oh dear. Now then. When this happens, go to the top of the first mistake and look at it. Error expected something. File parser uh, line 8. File parser. Yes. Okay. Rookie error. <laughs> File parser. Semicolon, semicolon. There's no return type in a constructor. You don't have one. But I'm missing something. What am I missing? Yes, column, column. you have to specify the class. Absolutely. Well, why do I have to specify the class? Because it's not the same file. There's nothing here that says this is part of file parser at all. But we have to do that with all of the methods. Yes, you do. Not the variables, but the methods. The methods you do. Because they have to be called. Now, can you have bare methods in here that have no class specified? Can I just have a print file that doesn't 
have a class attached to it, you can, but for heaven's sakes, don't do it. Don't do it. The only thing in here that should be in file parser.cc is methods in file parser class. You should not have other things in here. Okay, so I wish I could tell you that I would just left those off to see if you can catch it in the last note. <laughs> Note that those error messages are not particularly helpful. It takes, you have to look at them and see. Error in paren expected. How helpful is that? Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> now we got a clean compile, but what's with the in parentheses expected? So you will learn to love the Java compiler because this one is so much more cryptic. And in particular, when you're building things using the standard template library, hundreds of errors or warnings. Um, try to keep those under control because when you're doing the making, you have a dozen class files, then you'll have so many that you can't scroll back and see them. All right, so driver, command line. Okay, how about driver? What's the file name? That's the only argument. Okay, driver. And then demoio.s. And then there's our file. So it did what we expected. It just read the file and then we dumped it. Questions? Yes? So for a print file, you want to turn it to the screen, right? Yes. Later on, I'm going to have you, you know, print the file, but you're going to use the tokens to do that. Yes. Um, I wanted to change this to the place that gives us the I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Which of the includes tickets and then I draw the associated with the development? Here? Well, that's the exception. <coughs> with read file, well, string, obvious, vector, obvious, IO string, file string. IO manip has the IOS specifiers in it. And then C standard library, you have the one to call C functions like C underscore STR. That's in the string class, but if you're doing the C strings, you may need this. Now, you can include more than you need. It won't be pulled in unless it's actually necessary. But if you leave out something you need, you're going to get really cryptic messages too. It will say token not found. Implicit instantiation of undefined template standard basic IF string. Right. So that kind of message indicates there's no file string. You don't need to include these in the CC file because this single include pulls in everything in that H file except the content that that H file will pull out and stuffed into the file right here. So you've got all the include right there. Other questions? Yes? If we want to add more functions, they need to be under our private uh, you should um, area? Use the private method you're going to use here. And I suggest you separate the variables from the methods. If you're going to use the struct, put the struct here. You could certainly do that. Put the struct there. Um, anything that needs to be class level should go here. But again, things like int i. Well, it's crazy to put that here as a class on the very Okay. So, I want to do something else here that you may find helpful. And uh, if you already worked this out, please don't hate me. It sometimes happens that 
I ask students to solve problems, and they spend a lot of time working on it, and then lo and behold, in class, I talk about it and give away the ranch, so to speak. And I think we're faced with a situation where more of you are baffled and confused than not about how to parse a lot. Would that be a fair assumption? Okay. So I want to show you a couple of techniques for doing this and explain the pieces. This does not necessarily solve your problem, of course, um, but at any rate. This creates a string. I don't need to include file parts, or we're going to do something different with this now. So I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to grab these extra includes so I don't have any problems. So I'm using this existing file and understand that this is not your driver program rather than writing another file, I'm just cannibalizing this driver for something entirely different. So I think I'm going to do this way. String S equals the front box. All right, now I'm going to say constant character delimiters equals, OK, what are the delimiters? So there's a space and there's a tab. Yes? There's a character array. So each entry is one character. It's not a string, it's a character array. Constant means it's immutable. Now, can you have anything besides a space and a tab between tokens? Not so much you've got the inline character, but that's a different story. Okay, so that should do it. Let's make a buffer of size 100 and then if s dot length is greater than 100, throw an exception. I'm just going to comment this out. I'll put it in here. Dangerous not to check. But in the interest of efficiency, let's go ahead. If you have a file name that's longer than 100 characters, then that's kind of helpful. But at any rate, you need to make sure it matters when you're making C strings. So, STRCPY buffer. S dot C. So we have made a C string out of this one. I mean, what you're getting into your program is a string, right? You have string lines. That's what you have to work with. So we're turning it into a C string. C string size matters. They don't have allocators, so the string will not be the right size unless you make it the right size. So it's exactly 100. And we'll use what we need from it. It will be null terminated by string copy. OK. A character pointer. Now then, I'm going to use this character pointer to find the token. So PTR equals. Now understand if I say PTR without the star, it's a pointer. It's a pointer. So it takes buffer and delimiter, delimiter. So on the very first call, the function expects a C string as an argument, and it's the first character's the starting point to scan for tokens. So in subsequent and later calls, what's going
thing that the thing is, it looks for a null pointer because it null terminates each piece. Okay, so here's the loop. This is not necessarily intuitive or obvious. While the pointer is not null, see how. And then you can look down to the RD. No. Return zero. So this is treating it as, as a C string. All right, let's see how many typos I have. Minus O. Driver ready. Driver, driver, yeah, CVP. Error. Incorrect. I did use the namespace. They'll never forget this. You get weird errors. Okay. Let's try again. Okay, we got to compile it. Driver. Talk there's your token. So I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of you just replaced the light bulb in that projector. It's still not there, is it? So here we have the quick job box. Yes. If you had two strings, you can divide them quick with it. If I had two strings, two uh, spaces. Huh. Well let's see. The quick. So there's no spaces there. There's five spaces there. Let's put two tabs, why not? So the quick backslash t backslash t, which is the tab character brown, bunch of spaces box. Let's try it. How cool is that? Is that cool? <laughs> okay. Yay. So, that little tiny bit of code right here takes care of busting those things. I'm huh? second. Some questions, anybody? Yeah. I really think Okay, while the pointer's not null, okay, <clears throat> the pointer's going to point after the last string. Well, each piece of this needs to be null terminated. It's a C string. So you're getting C strings back, and PTR points to them. So, of course, you wouldn't want to put a star in front of this, or you get the first character of each token. Instead of the, quick, brown, foster, T, Q, B, F. So you don't want the star here, you want to print the string. Well, the string's null terminated. So start with the null. Look for the next delimiter. That's the logic here. Start at the null termination in this guy and look at the next delimiter. So pointer moves down. Pointer moves down through the string. Every time you print it, it points to a different place. When pointer is null, then you fall out, there's nothing left. The pointer is not null here, but this null is the end of the last token. That's your starting point. So notice here, start at buffer, the beginning of the string. And this is a pointer. This is a pointer, and it's the first character is that pointer. So start at the first character and look for the break on the delimiter. Then you have to do this to prime the loop. So you print the pointer, and then you grab the next token. Start at the null, which is after at the end of the first token, and go to the next delimiter. And when you hit null, you're done. None of these are obvious or intuitive. So the next one I want to show you is C++. It's an elegant solution. And I need to write on the board for a minute here so it makes sense.
but for ground costs. Okay. So this is based on two methods. On two methods. Find first of, find first not. Find first of and find first not of. Okay, well we're using the delimiter as a starting point. So this is the first not of. Find first not of. That's the first token in the line. Find first not of one of the delimiters. With me? Your delimiters are okay, in the tab. So find the first thing that's not a space or a tab. Bang, it's the T. Now, find first of space. Find first not of Q. You see how this works? Find first of finds the delimiter. Find first not of finds the first thing that isn't a delimiter from the position you're at right now. So we move down. First we say find first of, with the T. Then find first not of. Okay, that's my token. Now find first of. Not, I'm sorry, find first not of. Find first of. That's my token. You see how this goes? All right. So we're going to clean this up. In a different way, we're going to use C++ rather than C strings. Okay. So I'm going to say, we've got our OI risky delimiters. Constant characters. Well, I'm on the string now. We're not using C stuff. Constant string. There's my delimiter. Don't need this stuff. Don't have to worry about the length because C strings size themselves as needed. Okay. So now I need a new variable string size type. Uh, Size type, yes. Last position. And I want position as well. So this is position and last position. I have these two pointers then that I'm going to move down to process this. Now, this string double colon size type is nothing more than an unsigned integer. It's the index in the string. This is very common. These members have specific types associated with them. But this is an alias for an unsigned int. That's all it is. If you use an int, then you get warnings. So that's why I eliminated it. Or I'm not using it. All right, so let me clean this up. So we got our variables we need. Now I'm going to say uh, last DOS is equal to str dot or s dot time. S dot time first. Limiter zero. That's where I'm starting. Click on it. And position is equal to S dot time first time. Again. here. So we have to prime the loop. Alright, our while loop. 
Wild. String. M-P-O-S. Not equal to P-O-S. Now this variable, or this member, N-P-O-S, is the end of the string. It's the end of the string. That's all that is. And again, I'm using these. And you, could you use the string length? You could. But using this is the way it is done, and it avoids warnings. So, NPOS not equal to. <coughs> so while neither one of these position or last position is equal to the end of the string, you have it run off the end. Keep going. So in the body of the loop, we have your vector dot push back. So I'm going to do print it. The substring start at the last position and I take that many characters. Position minus last position. Take that many characters. And then we want to go ahead and print it. See how string. Now we need to reset last of position and position. Not of. First, not of. And then, what? And then POS equals S dot time. First, of. Limiters. Last. We're moving these down lock step. Find first position not of, that's a letter. First position of, your delimiters is there. You subtract these two to get three, which is the number of characters to take in the substring, then you move down. Then you move down. Questions? See the logic here. Let's try it. See how many. There's a typo. Yeah. There's a typo. What did I type the last one? Huh? The camera. Yeah, the last pose is called the volume. What line is it? 678. Ah. Old habits die hard, I swear. <coughs> Too much Java. <laughs> is there such a thing? Two errors. Array initializer must be initializer list. I think it's your wild. You didn't close the wild, did you? Yeah, it was just a typo. I always do that with brackets. Brackets are my nemesis. Brackets and parentheses. Wow, we got a clean compiler. Okay. There are two techniques for busting the line. Now, Camel case is not done. 
C++. It's not common. Uh, usually I close the while loop with a bracket, a line with a while Oh, the style of the thing isn't terribly important. I, a lot of people do this. And I understand that if they do this, then it's easy to make them line up. But my view of this is it wastes space because you've got a deadline here. And if you had the bracket here, it's better. That's, I know you have that there, but the close one I would line up with the while of this is the same It's a style thing as long as you're consistent. I tend to put them here so they don't clash with this, which of course you'd have further back as well. That's how I do it. Am I going to grade your style? Oh, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, I'm just curious if it was similar to the formal case and that it's just not done that way. We got the ABC. What if there's a space in the ABC? Then what's that going to do? What's that going to do? See, I did leave you some problems to solve, didn't I? Okay. Yes, it will bust this on the spaces. Therefore, if you want to make sure that that remains one token, you'll have to handle it. You'll have to handle it. Will the string TOK function do the same? Sure. Yes. So you'll you will have to look at how you're gonna work with that. Questions. So the only piece really that we didn't type up in class is how to break this into tokens and deal with the single quote marks. So the number of problems you have to solve for this project don't seem so daunting now, do they? I hope. Does this seem doable? Yes, no, I'm depressed. I want to jump off the, <laughs> jump off the bridge. You know, you're committed to learning new stuff the rest of your life if you're doing computer science. And so, when you're my age, you're still going to have to be learning new things unless you made your millions and retired early. So, get used to it. My experience with this class has been, I always have the students do C++ here because it seems a great way to teach you C++ and have you do something really meaningful in that language. And if you leave here with just Java, I just don't think that's really best. You should leave here with some serious skills in C++ and C as well. Um, maybe a couple of scripting languages along the way, but you need something more than just Java. And so I think this fits well into what we're doing in this class. C++ is complicated. It's a big language with lots of features. We're not going to cover in detail all of them, but we will go ahead and do additional C++ stuff as we go forward. The goal being to help you master this. It seems like, as I said, a great opportunity to do that. Finally, I'm sure somebody in this class already had all this figured out. And sometimes students do that, and then I stand here in class and go through it, and they get very angry with me. It's like, Josh, why does he do that? Well, the value you got from figuring it out is huge. And so that's one thing that if you actually make that effort and figured out this harsh problem on your own, that's huge. The learning experience from that is super important. And the other thing to bear in mind is that there's no competition between groups or students. I don't grade on the curve, therefore, if somebody else does a little better than they would have because I gave them the push, that doesn't hurt you. It isn't going to hurt your brain. So um, I want you guys to figure out 
what to do with this pesky problem. With this. And I won't be covering in class what to do about it. I want you guys to figure out what to do with the quote mark because it's essential. Okay. Questions? Anyone about the project? Yes. There are no double quotes in the language. So only single quotes. Doing a generic file parser or line tokenizer, string tokenizer, that would work with any string is extraordinarily difficult to do. And it's beyond what I want you to do. So by having certain rules, that makes this whole thing easier. Yes? What we need to do is with validation. Well, yes, but what form does that take? It's a great question. Um, what are you going to reject? Well, the rules for the language we talked about, um, you can't tell whether an opcode is valid or not because you don't know what they are. There's no way to check that. So don't bother. And in fact, if the assembler attempts to process something and it doesn't exist, then you're going to get the error from the assembler. But we're writing the macro preprocessor. That's what we're going to be concerned with. So we're essentially going to let the machine code, machine language statements go through untouched. What you have to validate in terms of the file parser, what if you have five tokens? Is that bad? Invalid. Yes, of course it's invalid. Well, what if you have four tokens, but the last one isn't a comment? Invalid. Okay. What if you have three tokens? It's valid if and only if the first one is a label, but what if the first one is not a label? So this is the edge of your page, and I have start. Uh, move E1, E2. Is it valid? No, it's not valid. Why? Because labels can only start here. Therefore, start can't be a label. It has to be a machine instruction. So this is the opcode, because it can't be anything else. This is the operand. And this is not a comment, so it's bogus. So if there is nothing at index zero in the line, if it's, if it's uh, blank, a, a, a space or a tab even, and you have three tokens and the last one is not a comment, then it's bogus. So these are the kind of validations that you need to look for. But for heaven's sakes, don't try to figure out if it's a valid opcode. It's not necessary. You don't know what they actually are. Other questions, anyone? So I've got a question for you. What happens if you have an empty file? Will that work? Will it crash? What will it do? It should just not do anything. The, the file exists and it's valid, and the while it's going down, it's going to be valid. Well, that's what you would expect if you process it. Yes, but you shouldn't crash, that's the point. Okay, we'll stop there, pick this up in uh, next week. And, uh, we're going to return to assemblers pretty quickly. We have a little bit more sequence.